What's up everyone? In this video I'm going to be giving you my breakdown of my solo flawless run on the duality dungeon. Probably the most difficult I've done so far are the eight. So this is the sixth dungeon. So we're six down, two left to go. So let me just give you a run through of my build here. So I'm using the Dawn Chorus with the Dragon's Breath again. Daybreak Super, Phoenix Dive, just because it's more mobile, but you can go with whatever you want. Celestial Fire, same again, pick your fancy. Healing Grenade so I can get the Restoration Times 2 with the Touch of Flame aspect. Using the Ember of Empyrean so I can extend my Restoration by solar uh, weapon or solar ability kills. Or even my Daybreak Super if I happen to have Restoration Times 2 then. Ember of Searing. So while I defeat Scorched Targets, it's actually going to uh, generate a Fire Sprite. And intrinsically, it also gives you 10 recovery, which is nice for the Warlock especially, as recovery is tied into the class ability cooldown. Then we have Ember of Mercy. The top bit isn't important, but what is important is the second bit at the bottom, where I, if you pick up a Fire Sprite, it, you'll gain Restoration. So this is just a, a sort of uh, a safety net if, if for some reason I don't have Restoration Times 2 from the Healing Grenade, I can also just pick up a Fire Sprite from Defeated Targets. And finally, finishing up with Ember of Ashes. So, like I said previously, more Scorch Stacks leads to more Ignitions, more Ignition leads to more damage. And I'm back with the Scatter Signal, the best or one of the best uh, Fusion Rifles in the game. Apocalypse Integration with the Incandescent Roll, so that will help with my uh, Scorch targets. And then the Dragon's Breath. The featured exotic for this season. Obviously a great rocket launcher. And my Seasonal Artifact mod for the, uh, this mission. So the armor mods have got Time Dilation, Proximity Ward. Which has got to synergize with the Solar Weapon Surge. Proximity Ward is just going to help with the survivability. On the chest, I just got the Concussive Dampener and Solar Resistance mods as we're going up against Cabal on this mission. And then for the Gauntlets, just triple uh, Solar Loader. If I happen to miss a rocket with the Dragon's Breath and it doesn't give me the ammo back, I can just reload as quick as possible. And the Apocalypse Integration has a really slow reload time. And then the Dawn Chorus Helmet. So I just got Heavy Ammo Finder, Special Ammo Finder, and Solar Siphon. Obviously the Ammo Finder mods for extra ammo, and the Solar Siphon for the Orbs of Power from Hand Cannon Kills or Dragon's Breath Kills. So yes, I'm just going to speed this up for you. As you can see, I'm just uh, held in Eris more there with the weapon shots as I've seen this part of the dungeon so many times now by, uh, with my solo flawless attempts. So yeah, nothing fancy here, you're just going to get to the first encounter by any means necessary. So as you can see, you don't even need to fight anyone here, you just run along as, uh, as quick as you can. This part is uh, just getting to the encounters is pretty tedious. Especially when you've attempted it as many times as I have. The only shortcut here is just this bit. Just kill the Scions, just spin around and shoot the bell where you come through. You don't actually need to find the next bell in the sequence, you can just uh, use that to get through the next bit. As you can see near the bells in this dungeon can be quite glitchy, so just be careful. I have had a few uh, attempts ended because of the... Uh, even when there was time left in the encounters, the, the bell just collapsed on me and ended my run, so just be wary for them. So here we go, up to the first encounter here. I'm not going to walk you through the mechanics or anything, as I'm assuming you've you've done it before if you're attempting a solo flawless run. But those are not so readily available. 
plus all I did there was just swap out my chest piece for these solar reserves just so I can get extra heavy ammo and swap it back. The only thing I will say about the mechanics though is I'm going to show you how to get a little bit of extra time. So we killed the first sign there and we've picked up the standard. So we're going to do here just to get some extra time. We're just going to kill the second Scion here, but leave his standard there. So when you come back through after doing the activate the first standard, the Scion's going to respawn, but the standard's going to stay stay there to collect. So it all, it all makes sense. I'll talk you through it as, it, as it's happening, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So in here, this is what the fusion rifle is really handy for. Just running through, just one shots all these uh, visions. Here, see the scions respawned. So you're just going to collect the standard, leave the scion alive. And that way, then when we go back to the the real world, uh, and then back into the nightmare world, he will be there along with the visions of Galron. Once you kill him, then they will actually jump up the time by about 10 to 15 seconds. So again, I'll show you what that looks like on screen now when we uh, activate the standard. Right, so back into the nightmare world. Just using my hand cannon here as I was just trying to save, save some ammo, but so that you can see there. So once we kill the standard, it actually went from like 54 seconds back up to a minute and five seconds. I picked up the standard there just because sometimes it was, um, for some reason, it was kind of glitching when I was leaving them there and then going back for them, so I decided to take it. I think it does actually glitch this time in this in this run, so you'll see for yourself. So we just got a bit more time to damage the boss. So with Dragon's Breath, you've got to be also really careful that you don't run into the boss and he kills you up. So just try and uh, keep your distance as much as you can. It is possible to do a two phase here, but unfortunately on this run I did manage to get a three phase. So leave it till about 10 seconds and then obviously get back through the, uh, the bell. And that's damage phase number one complete. I just want to backtrack as well to what I said at the beginning of the video when I said this is probably the hardest dungeon so far. It's not so much the, the combat of it, it's just the there's just so many things that can go wrong. So like just being in the nightmare world, you can easily just run, you know, you can easily just lose track of time while you're damaging the boss. But also, like I said earlier with the bells, there's many attempts when I when I was uh, doing this. <clears throat> and even when it was like 10 seconds left, I shot the bell and then for some reason they just said the nightmare collapsed and killed me and ended my flawless run, so... There's just a lot of things that can go wrong. And the Cabal obviously they have the tendency to sort of knock you about, whether it's just like with melees or just like pushback weapons. Like that, then the boss almost knocked me off the edge. So, the, so like I said, it's just the combat's not so difficult, it's just the 
There's just a lot of things that can go wrong. As you can see there, when I actually went through and looked up there for the Scion, but the, for some reason they weren't there. Never mind, I actually didn't glitch in this video, so uh, but just be wary for that yourself when you do do it when you kill the scion in the before the boss damage phase. Sometimes the sanity drops might not work when you come out of the uh, nightmare world, but sometimes it does. So, just a little heads up for when you are attempting it, just to. Uh, Just so it's not much, of, much <coughs> just so it's not much of a shock to you. Just one shot everything. Like I said, it is a possible two phase, but uh, unfortunately I don't get it this time. For some reason I just assumed I had a fusion grenade or something, because I just launched a, <laughs> just launched a healing grenade on the boss. To be honest with you, if Yannam needed to kill me then I may have got two phase, but I think I just panicked and Phoenix died and nearly run away there. Yeah, so see as you can see, uh, kind of a bit fine there with the uh, with the old time. Yes, yeah, so see, so that's the glitch I'm talking about. If you kill the Scion standard. Sometimes it just doesn't activate. And as you can see, the boss has obviously got tiny health left, so I don't... Uh, I don't think I'd bother doing the, the sort of time extension cheese here, so... I think i just get the two and get out of there. Uh, no, I didn't. Why did I not do that? Yeah, so basically, as you see, my advice to you is, I think I was just obviously in the habit and the swing of things. For my, uh, I should have picked up that standard there, because obviously, as you can see, the boss got such low health. I basically just wasted time here. Well, 
not too much time, I suppose, because you sort of roll back in the night, you roll back out uh, twice anyway, so. Snag some ammo along the way. As you can see there with the Scion spawns, I know obviously we don't need it now, but hopefully you can see the effect of that extra time. There we go, so this is obviously the last bit here, finish them off. There we go. And that's Garron done. And don't worry, I didn't forget the chest, it's just because I've uh, done this boss a few times this week so there's nothing to get so on to the second encounter now just show you a quick um, well I don't do it but just if you are feeling daring enough there is a little shortcut there you can jump on a pipe and you can jump up to the top ledge there where I just shot so let me just speed this up for you now until the second one. Obviously, this bit's nothing fancy, you just jump it along and press the buttons. My advice here would just be just to take out the sirens from over here. As it did happen to me on one of the initial flawless runs I did, or attempts I should say, was I jumping along here and one of the snipers hit me and it flinched me so hard I just didn't make the jump, so. No one thought of me to the dead of raw materials and nothing more. Just for this big jump here, you just want to, especially with the Warlock, you just want to sort of jump out, wait for like, sort of like half a second and then activate the glide. Just so you don't hit your head on the ceiling. Secret chest is over there, behind that doorway. And when you get through the Nightmare, the platform right underneath where you just came from is three turns. The one to the left then is two turns. And then again the one to your left then is also another two turns. So just if you remember the sequence three two two, we shouldn't have any problems just getting through there. And now onto the second encounter. So I'll put a map at the in the description of this video down below, along with the dim link and other solo flawless uh, dungeons but uh, I'll just put a map for this just to show you where all the symbols are just so you can sort of refer to it as you do your solo flawless attempt 
but basically looking at the sort of stairs going up to the bottom left where I'm currently sitting killing enemies is the sun. Bottom right, what I'm jumping over to now is the chalice. The top right, so the right side of these stairs going up, is the axe. And then the opposite side to that, then the left side of the stairs going up, is the uh, walls. So in an ideal world, you want the, the standards to spawn so opposite, so like now I'm, I'm doing the chalice. I didn't quite see what the other cha uh, standard was then when I was watching this, but... but ideally you want them to be opposite, so <coughs> you can um, spawn the bell keepers on the same side as you get in your standard. I would advise killing with war beasts here. Just because, well, the way I do it anyway. So as you can see, I stop right here. So if I didn't kill the Warbeast now, they would just all be jumping at me and flinching me and it would just be a nuisance. So if you're going to do it the way I do it, just uh, make sure you kill the Warbeast. So like that, so I'm just going to drop the chalice in and then the second standard over there is the Warbeast. Again, it's sort of healing grenade down, get some hard control done. Get that restoration times two as high as I can, so 15 seconds is the highest you can get to. And it's handy with the uh, Ember of Mercy perk as well, uh, fragment as well, because picking up restoration, act uh, picking up the fire sprite, sorry, actually extends my restoration as well. Which is in the heat of battle, actually, is. Uh, really uh, useful. So here I'm sat currently standing on the war beast uh, standard. So kill the bell keepers there. The bell opposite will open up. So the bell keepers in the nightmare world will spawn opposite to the bell you shoot in the real world. So if the standards like I said are opposites, like spawn opposites, so like in my case here is chalice and war beasts. You can set it up so you can actually spawn the bell keepers on the same side. You have to pick up the standard. And like I said earlier, it's not the combat so much as hard as just obviously the nightmare world is timed. And if you do happen to, for whatever reason, kill the wrong standard, it's very true very tricky to uh, save. I like with that with a solo weapon if you actually shoot the backpack you can just ignite them. If you're wondering why I didn't uh, wait to see if the other one was dead is because I see in the bottom left a little prompt that a bell is ready to be rung. So don't waste any time look looking for the bell keepers if you can see that the prompt is there you know they're dead. So the, each of these bosses do exactly the same thing, just tag them with the dragon's breath and just uh, rain fire on them with the uh, daybreak super and then just finish them off then either, either with a fusion rifle or a hand cannon. Again just getting some hard control done. See there to the bottom left, a bell is ready to be rung, so, so this time it's sun and axes. So lucky me, opposites.
damn skill of the war beasts. Then you're gonna snipe the, uh, well, not snipe, but you just have the high ground on the, on the bell keepers there. If you set it up correctly. See, like that then. I know they've taken out the, uh, the physics damage a few months ago, Bungie did, but. Obviously this dungeon is so hard dense, even if you do get knocked into a wall, the, you know, the knock itself won't kill you, but there's just so many enemies, if they just shoot you once or twice afterwards, you know, you're dead. So every time you come out of the night, you really just want to do some, uh, some hard clear. straight to type 2 going. It gives you a bit of breathing space. out of the nightmare world and we're just going to uh, kill the second boss. So like there, yeah that was obviously, that could have been a lot worse. Had he come, for, had he come to me from the other side that he could have even knocked me off the edge so just be careful of that. Yes, as you can see, I come pretty close to dying there. He knocked me. I try to save myself. I dash under the blue flames. But uh, see, that's where Phoenix type comes in handy. I don't have to wait for the animation to put down a rift. I can just, as I'm in midair, just press the class ability button and just heal myself. I think this time I actually get unlucky. I think it's Sun and Chalice. Yes, it is. So this time I decided to do this sort of more tricky one first, where the the bell keeper spawn the opposite side of the stand that I need. So this, as you can see, I position myself in the place where the bellkeepers are going to spawn in the nightmare world, just for obviously time purposes. So I kill one, kill two, and then I just run up to get the stand that I need. Obviously, for where I was standing, the closest one to me is the chalice. I've already killed the bell keepers now, so that's all I need to do is just run over here. And I can just jump straight to the bell. There we go, get out of there.
Good one, so Bellkeeper's are down, I'm just going to position myself on the, on the uh, stand that I need. But yeah, to be honest, the hand cannon's not the longest of ranged weapons. Obviously, if you don't have the apocalypse integration, just you know, feel free to use uh, you know, any other weapon, so like maybe Sunshot. Or possibly the Brave, uh, the new Brave Luna's Howl. Just something solar that you can obviously keep your restoration up with, and uh, maybe that you can apply Scorch to enemies and get Radiant as well, so. Anything to help you out, basically. There we go, and that is the final one. So plant this standard now, I can kill the third and final boss here. You gotta be careful with this one, because this guy actually like jumps up in the hover, so... If you had a sword, because I know a lot of people do the duality dungeon with the lament. Quite frankly, like maybe a controversial opinion here, but I actually I really just don't get on with the lament. I just don't like it. So this is where I just target with the dragon breath and just hammer him with the daybreak super. As you can see, they actually miss him there. So I'll oh, just reload. He's up in the air again. Just finish him off with the Dragon's Breath. There we go. That's the second encounter done. Again, that's all I will say with these encounters is just, you know, with any of these solar floors, I just, just try and take your time as much as possible. I know you obviously want to try and do them as quick as you can just to uh, you know, look more impressive, but just take your time as long as you get the job done, that's the main thing. I'll just speed this up for you again just to get to the third and final encounter. So we actually managed to get the two phase on Keitel at the final boss. Which I was pretty chuffed about. And just some context as well while we're you know, on our way to the final boss. I haven't actually done any of these dungeons in the game before Solo Faller, so... Um, hopefully I can just sort of get across to people who just want to attempt it for the first time. Just, you know, it can be done and it may be easier than you think. And like I said, the dim link and the uh, all the other solo floors dungeons will be in the description down below. Right, so here we are, coming up on the third and final boss. This is almost easier than the second one, just because <clears throat> there's just so many ads here, and I know that sounds. Obviously, counterintuitive but there's just so many ads here that you can obviously keep the restoration times two up all the time. And most of the ads are silent as well so more or less you know, one two shot kills really. We do get the well, bell keepers and the centurion spawning in later but for the most part all the ads here are pretty easy to kill so restoration that time isn't a problem. So I would just start this encounter off just by killing all the bell keepers, just so all the bells are available to to shoot. Unlike the second encounter, just get some art clear done. So sort of slow the gameplay down for you. 
you don't want to try and go uh, looking for standards and trying to shoot bells and you just got an army of ads on you, so bit of a waste of time. The annoying thing on this bridge is the more because there's just so many of them they just stop, stop bloody flinching you around. So there we go, we've got two standards. So in this encounter, although there's three bells and six bell keepers, that's all you need to remember is the bell you shoot is going to be the bell you come out of in the nightmare world, so you can kind of set it up for uh, whatever standards there are. You want to obviously shoot the bell closest to them. So that way, then you can actually come out of the, that bell as well. So obviously I couldn't shoot the bell on the left that time because I used that one previously, so the next closest thing was the middle bell. And then the bell keepers in whatever bell you shoot, the bell keepers will spawn on the two other bells. So I they shot the middle bell, the bell keepers will spawn on the left and the right bells. So it's got a little bit too too hairy for me there, so I decided to sort of back up, catch my breath and just sort of regroup. Obviously you don't want to die this far into the dungeon. So for this bit just to try to activate the the bells to activate the title damage phase, just again, just get some map clear done until you're able to get a clear shot of the bell or the columns, whatever you want to call them. As soon as you spawn in here, just kill the middle uh, bell keepers. You can, hopefully, you can do that just before Kyle spawns. So, I was actually quite lucky this, you actually came to the middle anyway. So, just tag with Dragon's Breath like the other bosses. The spawn and the spammer with the daybreak. I like to leave a little, you know, a few seconds at the end there just to try and uh, kill the bell keepers because obviously you don't want to go back into the real world before you use all three bells of damage. So now I use my super, just alternate back and forth with the dragon's breath and the scatter signal. As you can see, they attacked with the uh, melee with the. Um, Seasonal artifact could revitalizing blast, which will actually weaken it by 15%. So I just checked to see how, see I had enough time there, took out some scions, and then just un unload on it some more. There you go, and that is damage phase one, so just run around try and get any more ammo you can find. And it's just rinse and repeat. Just 
take out all the bell keepers, do some map control, check whatever standards you have and you, whatever you need. And as you can see here, I hope I'm uh, doing enough justice, but the restoration times too is just awesome here. So many ads and just the health is just constantly regenerated. So as you can see, we need sun and chalice, so two opposites. So chalice is at the bottom right, sun's at the top left. So I just decided to use that bell just so I can kill the standard here and then as I run over to get the chalice I can kill the four bell keepers over this side. Just like that. You don't have to kill the Colossus, but obviously you can feel more comfortable killing the Colossus so he's not just bouncing around, he's just obviously being my guest. Sort of rush to plant the standards is the advice I'd give. Is, like I said, once you come out of the nightmare world, do some land clear, tidy up a bit, and then plant the standards when you have enough time. And got a swarm by wall piece there, but try not to get too close to the uh, bell keepers. Obviously, they, they have a, uh, a big knockback attack. So it's just, uh, like I said, in encounter two, you just don't want to get bumped into a wall and then sort of shot by an ad or two. It's really, really annoying to have me. Again, just do some ad clear. Go. The column has been activated. So that's all I have to do now is just shoot. There we go. And the damage phase is going to be exactly the same as the first one. So I'll try and kill him as quick as you can. See? Yes, it comes in the middle again. I almost thought I messed that up then, so that was a little lucky. <laughs> Again, it's Tiger with Dragon's Breath. Spam the super. Just get as much damage as you can on it. Just wanted to see where she was going. Oh, 
thought you were taking off the edge there, so just be careful for that on your own run. Weaken it with the melee. And then just keep alternating back and forth between Dragon's Breath and the Scatter Signal. This is going to be the final bell, so take off some signs if you have time. And this is going to wrap up the Duality Dungeon, guys, so if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate your time. Hopefully this helps you out. If it does, please leave a like and a sub. Comment your thoughts and any questions you have down below. And the next dungeon I'm going to be working on is going to be Spire of the Watcher. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I shared your experiences and am uncertain.